Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Sam. I'm a foundation year two doctor working in London. Today's video is all about the foundation program, specifically talking about my experiences and giving you guys some tips about how to survive the foundation program. I have about five weeks left before I finish the foundation program and I cannot tell you just how happy that makes me feel guys, honestly. So this video is specifically for any of you guys that are in final year of medical school who are about to embark on their foundation training and um, hopefully I can have some tips for you guys here and there. So I'm in the North Central Thames Deanery. Um, it has a different name now because they've made the deanery smaller. Before it used to encompass Stevenage, Basildon and Watford as well as some London hospitals, but now it purely has London hospitals. I've stayed in London for both years, which is something that I wanted to do. In fact, I stayed in the same hospital for both years, which is something that initially I wanted to do, but now I'm thinking maybe it was not a good idea. <laughs> During the foundation program, you rotate, i.e. you do rotations within different departments around the hospital. And the whole point of that is that you gain competencies, um, regardless of what specialty you want to do in the future. You do both medicine and surgical specialties and you're exposed to all of these things so that regardless of what specialty you want to do in the future, whether you want to be a surgeon, a medic, or a general practitioner, or an obstetrician and gynecologist, um, you have the background knowledge and the background competencies that every doctor will have. For most people, there are six rotations over the two years. Three rotations are done in FY1 and three rotations are done in FY2. And rotations are basically just four month blocks in each department that you know you happen to get allocated. So for me, my rotations in chronological order were in emergency general surgery, which I started with, and then I did cardiology and then medicine for the elderly or geriatrics, and that was my FY1. For FY2, I did general practice, accident and emergency, and now I'm doing obstetrics and gynecology. And you guys know that I want to be an obstetrician and gynecologist, so this is by far the best rotation Ever. Actually, I liked general surgery, but they're on the same level. I've done a video about the foundation program and I can post it up here on the link here so you can click it and watch it. For you to complete the foundation program, you have to be ticked off as being competent at doing certain things. So specifically in FY1, there are certain procedures, core procedures that you have to be able to do. For example, arterial blood gases or ECGs or something like that. Um, that's for F1 and then you have to do certain things like quality improvement projects or audits or you have to be involved in, you know, so many things within the hospital and there's certain criteria that you have to meet before your ticked off is successfully completing the foundation program and FY1 and F2 are taking the standalone things. You have to successfully complete FY1 before you can obviously go into FY2 and then you have to successfully complete FY2 for you to say you have successfully completed the foundation program. So let's talk specifically about FY1 and then I'll talk about FY2 which is where I am now. FY1 was the best thing ever, honestly. Um, I started with emergency general surgery. When I found out that I was doing this rotation first, honestly, I was petrified. Notoriously, um, training in surgery in medical schools is not very good and um, you know all you're doing is holding the tra retractor and stuff like that you don't learn very much I felt uh, when I was a medical student about surgery unless obviously you wanted to be a surgeon and you did all these extracurricular things then you're probably well placed uh, to do a surgical job but for me um, my surgical knowledge at the time was so poor I didn't know very much about surgery and my thinking about doing a surgical job was the consultants would be really mean, the registrars would be mean, they'll expect me to know this anatomy which I don't know and I'll just have a horrible time. So I was so petrified about starting with this job. But guys, actually, it turned out to be the best job that I did in FY1. In fact, as I said, it's on the same level as doing obstetrics and gynecology now. I had the best time doing emergency general surgery. I had really cool consultants. I had really good registrars and really good SHOs and I really, really enjoyed my time. Um, I had nothing else to compare it to and so it was hard work. Um, I did a couple of vlogs when I was doing um, surgery in FY1 
before and I'll link them up here somewhere so that you guys can see but it was hard work in that the hours were long you had to be efficient and you had to deal with medical problems in surgical patients which you know you probably weren't confident with but it was so nice it was such a good job um, it was well supported and um, yeah I really had a good time my next job was cardiology which was my first medical job I was really worried about this job because I thought there will be cardiac arrest left right and center uh, which you know as a medical student I'd never been to a real cardiac arrest um, I'd only done sort of simulation and all that sort of thing which have to do uh, for my university as well we had to be trained in advanced life support in final year um, which I think helped because by the time I did cardiology I was exposed to my first cardiac arrest and I knew what to do which is a really cool thing uh, but again I was so scared about doing a medical job because I wasn't very confident with my medical knowledge um, even though I'd done five years of medical school type of thing um, I think FY1 for everyone you know you're just bumbling along and you're just trialing and erroring and you're just seeing what works and what doesn't work and it is a steep learning curve you learn so much so quickly and you become much much more efficient as a doctor as a clinician and you become confident On the most part, this is your first job as a doctor, as a clinician, and you haven't got anything else to compare it to. Um, all you can compare it to is being a medical student, but even when you were a medical student, you didn't work as hard as a, you know, as a doctor needs to work, I guess. Um, in terms of, you didn't have that much responsibility, right? If you were asked to take some blood from a patient and you couldn't do it, then you just say, I'm just gonna get the doctor. But now you are the doctor and you have to take the blood. <laughs> um, so that's something that, you know, you get very, used to very quickly um, you learn to make things work you become better at every skill that you're expected to do because at the end of the day if you can't do it you have to go and ask your SHO your registrar to do it which can be a little bit of an embarrassment especially if it's such a stupid thing like putting a camera in or taking some blood so you become very competent very quickly also, depending on your hospital, um, you're exposed to different things. Uh, in my hospital, we didn't have to do night shifts as FY1s, whereas my friends were in different other hospitals and they had to do night shifts as, as FY1s. Working at night in a hospital is somewhat different to working during the day, obviously, because there are less people at night and, you know, things tend to sort of hit the fan at night for some reason. But yeah, you learn so much very quickly and you are supported and, again, depending on which hospital you're in, you might be part of the cardiac arrest team and you might be expected to go to cardiac arrest and things, which we were expected to go to, but certainly my friends were not part of the cardiac arrest team when they were in FY1. So yeah, it just depends on where you are. Another thing that's cool about FY1 is you're just being called a doctor for the first time. For me, it took the longest time for me to answer to somebody going, doctor, doctor, I was like, until I realized that, you know, they were calling me, so <laughs> it's so stupid, really. Um, but yeah. 